Jim Rickards reveals a looming crisis, an impending financial crash that will reshape your generation. This crash might surpass the severity of the 2008 financial crisis, potentially causing a global economic contraction of up to 50%. If we were to pile up the entire debt of the United States in $100 bills, we would create not just one or two, but an astonishing 13 stacks of cash as tall as the Washington Monument. Despite boasting the world's largest economy, with a 2021 GDP of $23.3 trillion, the United States grapples with a substantial debt dilemma. The national debt has surged to an unprecedented $31.4 trillion, an ever-increasing level fueled by interest accumulation with the overall gross federal debt standing at $32 trillion. This figure includes both the debt held by the public and the debt within federal trust funds and government accounts. That $31.4 trillion in debt represents decades' worth of government expenditure, covering critical areas like health care, the U.S. military, social assistance programs, infrastructure improvements, education initiatives, environmental protection, and a myriad of other sectors. Over the years, the U.S. government's spending in these domains far exceeded the revenue it generated, resulting in the substantial accumulation of debt. If every American contributed, it would necessitate $94,000 from each individual, men, women, and children alike, to completely settle the national debt. The United States debt-to-GDP ratio, a gauge comparing debt magnitude to economic output, ranks among the highest globally. The $31.4 trillion debt represents the world's largest national debt and reflects a prolonged period of extensive spending that has consistently surpassed the government's earnings. The United States debt is equivalent to the combined debt of the next four countries with the highest indebtedness, namely China with $14 trillion, Japan with $10.2 trillion, France with $3.1 trillion, and Italy with $2.9 trillion. For nations with high debt levels, the ability to manage payments can be influenced by their gross domestic product, GDP which quantifies the total worth of a country's goods and services production. If a country's GDP exceeds its national debt, it can help offset the burden of debt. Before we dive deeper, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to this channel for more incredible life-changing content. Now, let's move on. A government's debt-to-GDP ratio, comparing a nation's debt size to its economic output, serves as an indicator of financial sustainability. Ratios surpassing 100% signify that a country's spending surpasses its earnings. Japan, ranked as the world's third-largest economy, holds the highest debt-to-GDP ratio at 239%. Tokyo's elevated ratio can be attributed partly to its aging population and social welfare expenses. Greece follows with the second highest ratio at 197%, trailed by Singapore at 165%, Italy 135%, and the United States at 116%. Debt is productive if you put it to good use. Debt becomes a productive force when used judiciously. In the case of U.S. debt, it plays a pivotal role in financing vital programs benefiting Americans, such as retirement and disability benefits, health care, economic security, and national defense. An illustrative instance of these programs' impact lies in the substantial reduction of the population living below the poverty line in 2019, from 22.8% to 12.2%, courtesy of income security initiatives. Certainly, U.S. debt is not without its challenges. A prominent concern revolves around meeting the interest costs associated with the debt, particularly as interest rates rise. Before the commencement of rate increases, interest costs accounted for 6% of the 2021 fiscal year's U.S. budget. 
Fast forward to December 2022, and these interest costs balloon to 15% of total government expenditure since the fiscal year's commencement in October. America's debt load has surged to a level six times its value at the turn of the 21st century. This current debt magnitude, in proportion to the U.S. economy, hasn't been seen since World War II. Projections indicate that it will increase by an average of approximately $1.3 trillion annually over the next decade. Recently, the United States reached its legal borrowing ceiling of $31.4 trillion, teetering on the precipice of yet another fiscal showdown in Washington. Republicans are demanding an increase to this limit only if President Biden accedes to significant spending reductions, echoing a partisan deadlock that has unfolded multiple times over the last two decades. However, America's expanding debt is the outcome of decisions influenced by both Republicans and Democrats alike. The national debt has experienced substantial growth since the early 1980s, from both Republican and Democratic administrations. The most substantial percentage increases in debt took place under Presidents Ronald Reagan and George W. Bush, both of whom implemented tax reductions leading to considerable deficits. Throughout the 2000s, politicians from both political affiliations have developed a tendency to resort to borrowing to finance war efforts, tax reductions, expanded federal expenditures, the needs of the baby boomer generation, and emergency strategies to navigate through two significant recessions. The growth has been driven by bipartisan tax cuts and bipartisan spending increases. The narrative isn't as straightforward as Republicans advocating tax cuts while Democrats push for spending expansion. In reality, both sides engage in all aspects of fiscal policy. While a majority of economists do not currently view the debt level as an immediate economic crisis, there are concerns that the federal government's size has grown to a point where it encroaches on private enterprise, potentially hindering overall growth. Economists within Washington and Wall Street are sounding alarms that failing to raise the debt ceiling before the government defaults on its obligations, as soon as June, could yield catastrophic consequences. Despite the persistent debates, policymakers have taken minimal strides toward reducing the federal budget deficit they've contributed to. It's been nearly 25 years since the government last spent less than what it received in taxes. Due to the popularity of contemporary spending programs and the rising costs of entitlements such as Social Security and Medicare due to the aging baby boomer population, budget experts believe that achieving a balanced budget might only be realistic in another decade or more. The White House estimates that around one-fifth of the $6 trillion federal budget for this fiscal year will need to be financed through borrowing. A budget including military expenditures, national parks, safety net initiatives, and the entire spectrum of government services. In just two decades, the United States has amassed an additional $25 trillion in debt. The origins of this fiscal predicament trace back to a political miscalculation at the end of the Cold War. During the 1990s, the United States enjoyed what was termed a peace dividend. It reduced its military expenditures, convinced that the need for significant national security investments had waned following the end of the Soviet Union threat. Concurrently, a dot-com boom brought about the highest federal tax revenues relative to the economy seen in several decades. As the 20th century came to a close, the nation's treasury was flush with tax income and burdened with fewer military commitments a combination many leaders believed would endure well into the future. However, this state of affairs didn't even last a full year. The dot-com bubble burst, leading to a decline in tax revenue. The terrorist attacks of September 11, 2001, prompted an intense push for rearmament in Washington. President George W. Bush responded by initiating conflicts in Iraq and Afghanistan, deviating from historical norms as he chose not to raise taxes or release war bonds to finance these wars. War bonds typically carry lower interest rates compared to other government bonds, 
contributing less to the debt. President Barack Obama, who succeeded Bush, followed the same approach, inheriting these ongoing conflicts. The expenditures resulting from these military actions contributed trillions of dollars to the national debt. Last year, the Defense Department said that the direct costs of the Iraq, Syria, and Afghanistan wars were over $1.6 trillion. While military spending went up, the money the government earned from taxes went down compared to the overall economy. This drop happened because of tax cuts signed by President Bush in 2001 and 2003. Even though those tax cuts were supposed to be temporary, President Obama in 2012 made most of them permanent by agreeing with congressional Republicans. From 2001 to 2018, the tax cuts and the extra interest costs from borrowing money to pay for them added up to about $5.6 trillion. This is roughly a third of the extra debt that the government had taken on during that period. In 2018, President Donald J. Trump approved more Republican tax cuts without matching spending reductions. These lawmakers now insist on controlling borrowing unless debt is tackled. Some believe the cuts would pay for themselves through economic growth, but independent experts disagreed. In 2018, the nonpartisan Congressional Budget Office forecasted over $1.2 trillion added to debt till 2022, despite growth. Republicans love tax cuts, but struggle with serious spending control. New programs also fueled debt. Bipartisan passed Medicare drug coverage added to deficits, costing over $100 billion in 2022, per Josh Gordon from the Committee for a Responsible Federal Budget. Calculating the Affordable Care Act's deficit impact was complex, while it increased Medicaid and health insurance subsidies. It also introduced taxes and health care system changes that affected Medicare spending. The main drivers of debt, often bipartisan, were responses to the 2008 financial crisis and the 2020 pandemic recession. In 2009, President Obama endorsed a nearly $800 billion tax cut and stimulus package amid recession. High safety net spending persisted as the economy slowly rebounded in the following years. Mr. Trump sanctioned over $3 trillion in aid packages after the 2020 global COVID-19 outbreak. The following year, President Biden endorsed a $1.9 trillion stimulus plan. Economists differ on the response's size and structure, but they largely agree that borrowing during economic downturns revived the economy and safeguarded individuals and businesses. Not all debt is equal. Investing and stimulating post-recession yields economic benefits preventing soaring unemployment and business closures. If you find this video informative, like and subscribe to this channel for more educational content. Let's continue. Assigning blame for total debt levels is complex due to interconnected policy decisions. Crudely, debt has surged by $12.7 trillion under Republicans Bush and Trump, and by $13 trillion during the Democratic tenures of Obama and Biden. Presidents and congressional parties contribute to federal deficits over time. China is decoupling from the U.S. China is now progressively disconnecting from the U.S., while their economies remain linked, this bond is fading. Although U.S.-China bilateral trade reached unprecedented heights in 2022, the trade partnership is becoming less intertwined. Escalating tensions have prompted U.S. and Chinese investors to retreat from each other's markets. The pivotal domain of this decoupling is technology, particularly the tech war entrenched in domestic, industrial, and technological growth. This conflict is set to detrimentally impact both economies and exert profound global effects. China's private and state-owned companies are facing heightened scrutiny in the U.S. The Committee on Foreign Investment in the United States has observed a surge in investigations involving Chinese investors since 2021, with China facing the most scrutiny. Notably, TikTok is facing scrutiny potentially leading to a U.S. ban unless it separates from its Chinese parent company, ByteDance. The technology decoupling between the U.S. and China has intensified over the past five years, 
Starting with Trump's restrictions on exporting in 2018, the U.S. has been tightening its tech limits on China. In October 2022, the Biden administration added export restrictions on certain equipment and services to Chinese semiconductor firms to hinder their advanced chip production, a U.S. security concern. Japan and the Netherlands have also joined this effort in curtailing exports of semiconductor manufacturing equipment to China. Technological decoupling has the potential to impact global growth in various ways, including diminished trade flows, resource misallocation, and reduced cross-border knowledge sharing. These concerns about global growth include both short-term and long-term implications. If you found this video insightful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more empowering content.